Hi folks, my name is Emil Wirtz. I'm a patibulary surgeon. I've decided to do this video presentation on a Whipple's procedure, also known as a pancreatic odeodenectomy. This video presentation is aimed at families and patients that are in the process of being counseled about the surgery and is about to undergo the surgery. It also serves as a referring point of reference for referring specialists and general practitioners but it's also applicable to learners such as medical students who would like to know a little bit more about the operation, but not too in depth. Why a Whipple's procedure? A Whipple's procedure may be a major life-saving surgery and may offer the only possible cure for pancreas cancer that are early enough to undergo surgery in combination with other modalities such as chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Pancreas cancer is the fourth leading cause of cancer death in men and women worldwide. An early stage cancer that is removed may have a five year survival rate of 37%, but only about 10% of people are diagnosed early enough to undergo surgery at this stage. If the cancer has spread to the surrounding tissues or organs, the five year survival rate may be as low as 12%, but when the cancer has spread to other organs or body parts distant to that of the primary cancer, the five year survival rate may be as low as 3%. So I'm going to discuss some issues around the pancreas, the symptoms, the operation, and then to just wrap everything up at the end. The pancreas. The pancreas is an abdominal organ that is situated deep in the abdominal cavity. It lies behind other organs, such as the stomach, it's wrapped around the duodenum, and it lies just anterior to the aorta and other major vessels. It has difficult surgical access. The function of the pancreas is due to it. The pancreas secretes hormones such as insulin, which is important in regulating glucose in the body. The other function has to do with secreting digestive enzymes in the body and has to do with absorption of foods. The blood supply around the pancreas is rich and it lies in close relationship to the aorta, but there's a major vein, the portal vein, and the superior mesenteric artery, which is also closely related to the pancreas. This requires more skill at the time of surgery to free the tumor of these vessels. Types of pancreas tumors. Adenocarcinoma are by far the most common form of pancreas cancer. Another form is a neuroendocrine tumor. They are less common and usually pertains to better survival rates. Cysts of the pancreas may require removal of that part where the cyst is localized in uh, because they may be pre-malignant or already have malignancy. The symptoms. The symptoms are varied. Um, often patients may present with deep jaundice or patients may have pain radiating through the back. There may be also other complaints such as loss of weight or loss of appetite and sometimes it could be really non-specific. The investigation of choice is a CT scan which is the mainstay of diagnosis at this stage, a double duct sign may be seen. A double duct sign is when the bile duct and the pancreatic duct are both dilated. A double duct sign in itself may only be positive for cancer in about two thirds of cases. Another useful modality of investigation is endoscopic ultrasound. I use this quite commonly. This is when the tumor is seen at endoscopic ultrasound and a needle may be passed straight into the tumor and take biopsies that will help to make the diagnosis of pancreas cancer. The operation. The operation usually has a duration of about four to six hours. It is performed under general anesthesia, aseptic surgical technique is used, and it's mostly performed open. There has been studies addressing laparoscopy and open surgery, and the most recent randomized controlled trial was from the Netherlands, where the open procedure had a 0% mortality rate. The laparoscopic procedure had a much higher mortality rate and at this stage for the general population open surgery remains the choice. The operation is quite standard, a standard exploration is performed. At this stage the surgeon palpate the liver, feel around for peritoneal nodules, the gallbladder and the bile duct is mobilized, the portal vein is dissected, there are three divisions, the pancreas, the bowel and the bile duct and the specimen is removed and sent to the pathologist for further assessment and staging. So in summary, the pancreas head is removed. A part of the stomach may be removed in the classic Whipple, but a pyloric preserving procedure will be divided right over there. That's called a pyloric preserving pancreatic odeodenectomy and then division of the small bowel and the bile duct. A reconstruction is performed 
The pancreas is attached to the posterior or the back wall of the stomach. The small bowel is reattached to the stomach and the small bowel is also attached to the bile duct. So that's the anastomosis of the pancreas into the stomach, onto the small bowel, um, to the bile duct and the stomach to the intestine. The post-operative phase is usually the first two days in the ICU or high care setting. A nasogastric tube is in place. The patient may be mobilized on the second post-operative day. Water and other liquids may be taken on the second post-operative day. Abdominal drains, which is placed at the time of the surgery, are usually removed after the fourth or the fifth day of surgery. Discharge usually happens after seven days. What do you expect once the patient is discharged? And the recovery phase may take several weeks. There may be minor needles that um, present itself, which may be dealt with. Chemotherapy or radiotherapy may only be able to commence about six to eight weeks after surgery. Complications such as gastroparesis may delay recovery. And pancreatic juice leaks or abscess formation occurs seldomly, but may prolong the hospital stay and require specific attention. So to conclude, a Whipple's procedure is a major surgery which involves removing a block of organs followed by three reconstructions. The pathology specimen provides the local staging which influences the type of chemotherapy or radiotherapy. For borderline resectable cases, this is a subset of cases which usually require the involvement of the tumor or invasion of the tumor into the portal vein or another major vessel and may require chemotherapy before surgery and also at the time of surgery may require resection of the part of the portal vein and a reconstruction. I hope this video is informative and that you found it helpful. If you would like to see more content, please post it in the comment box below and I hope to um, provide you with more information in the near future.